Hey y'all, so today in this video, I will show you how I got my PT test done. That way I can get NPIP certified. I just wanna make a reminder for everybody that I am in Texas, so your requirements to be part of the NPIP might be a little bit different than mine are. Now, I also know that if you're just gonna sell locally in Texas, you only need to get PT tested. You do not need to get NPIP tested if you're just selling within Texas. For other states, no idea. Okay, so newbie vlogger here. I completely did not have my phone recording when my agent was talking about the antigen and mixing it with the blood and the coagulation and I did not record all of the close-ups. I just, my phone was on the tripod, it fell over and I guess when my phone fell over, it stopped recording. So I got none of that footage, none of the good footage I got. So I will say this, you need to find a PT tester in your area, contact them, they'll set up a time to come out to test your birds. The pricing is gonna vary. Um, my PT tester, depending on the birds, um, for instance, I had 30 birds and it was $60. That is his pricing. Every agent's pricing is different. There is no rule book to the pricing. They can create their own pricing based on whatever guidelines they want. Now, if it was gonna be over 30 birds, he did tell me that it would be an additional fee. Thankfully, I was right at 30, so it was $60. Now for the NPIP, um, hopefully this year's the same, but at, at least for last year, the dues are $100. And the, the plan runs from July to July. So if you send in your dues in June, guess what? You're gonna have to send it again in July. So if you plan on getting uh, NPIP, Send, send the che check dated for July 1st, send it July 1st, okay? Because there's no point in sending it in June when you're gonna have to redo it in July anyways. It's a waste of money. So for instance, I'm not gonna, even though I'm PT tested now in April, I'm not going to send in my dues until July 1st. Now what my PT tester did is when he got here, I already had my birds put into kennels. It just makes it a lot easier if they're really easy to grab and do the testing on versus having to chase them all day trying to get them tested. So I had all of mine in kennels. Um, we would do one bird at a time. When he would poke them, he would take the drop of blood, mix it with the antigen. He would then, you know, circle it around, make sure it's not coagulating. If it starts coagulating in any kind of fashion, we would have had to sequester that bird. We would have to ban that bird, finish up all of the other birds, um, we would have had to then retest that bird to see if it was a true positive. If it was a true positive, then he would have to let the, um, I'm not really sure who, I'm guessing A&M, the college, then they would come out, they would probably quarantine my flock to see if it's just that bird, if it's another bird. Going from there, I know it can be a really serious thing if your birds ends up having PT. Um, I've read some stories about how they have to quarantine every single bird uh, every single backyard chicken in a five mile radius. So that would be no good if somebody in a five mile radius had to sequester their birds because mine were sick. Thankfully I passed. I passed with flying colors so my birds are not sick. But I can say it did take a little bit of time. Um, as you can, as you're gonna see from the footage is that not every bird was very happy with this process. And so I think he was here for a good hour and a half, I would say, and that's only with 30 birds. Um, but it goes by fast. Once you get a rhythm and everything, it goes by fast. Um, your agent may do it a little bit different than mine. As you will see in the footage, he liked to poke the bird and then hand the bird off to me because I do have to hold the bird to make sure that there's no coagulation going on because if I was to let that bird go and then we realize that bird is positive, then how am I gonna catch that bird again? Um, my birds are free range over my acreage, so that would have been really difficult. But there is a spot up, up, up underneath the wing of the bird that you can kind of see him. I really wish I would have got the up close, but I did not. 
Um, he just plucks some feathers off from that spot. That way it's a bald spot and he looks for the vein. He pokes it, gets a little drop of blood on his tool and then mixes it into the antigen. But just remember, if you get PT tested or NPIP, you can no longer buy birds from just anybody. So for instance, if you're PT tested, you can't just get on Craigslist and buy some baby chicks unless those people are also PT tested. Now, if it's in PIP, even harder. You can't get birds from anybody who is not in PIP. So just keep that in mind. If you become PT tested or in PIP, um, for Texas at least, I cannot buy birds from just anybody off of Craigslist. They would have to be in PIP. And there is a national database that you can look people up. You can find me on the database. And when you are in PIP and you do sell birds, I don't know about hatching eggs. Don't quote me on the hatching eggs, but the birds at least, when you sell it to somebody, you have to fill out a form and then you have to document that form in your NPIP registry. Um, so just keep that in mind too. Some people don't want to mess with all the NPIP because it is kind of a hassle because you can't just, you don't have free range anymore. Some people just opt to get PT tested, but I also know a lot of people who don't do either one of them and they still sell eggs and they still sell birds and nothing's ever happened. So, so here is one of the birds we did today. So here is one of the birds we did today. You can see that she does have a little bit of bruising right there. Um, there is still some bloody areas. So. She gets around just like the other one. Yeah. yeah. She's so friendly. Probably because she's blind too. But yeah, she gets around and she picks on the other ones when she doesn't get her way. I need a girl. I know it's Didn't feel mad. You're okay. She's my kid's favorite because they can just pick her up whenever and tote her around. And...
tinta translucent photograph. Go. This is another fan favorite. Poking, you gotta have good control too. I can't tell if this one's a little roux or a girl. Yeah, I, 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 I kept on to it because I'm like, I just, I'm not 100%. The way it acts reminds me of a rooster. But sometimes it's feathering. Back here, it doesn't look very roostery like the saddles. So. Yeah, I do have a few other hens um, that have the rose comb and the, the big wattles, but they're hens. She's riding the hips on the pelvis bones. Yeah. And the tip cross, there's the tip, the other tip is here. Okay. So she's, if she's not lying, she's pretty close. Yeah, I think usually when they're be young, they'll be about that far apart. Okay. So, she, yeah, the males are usually a little bit, they'll be close. Uh, that's definitely a female. Oh, good. She's a keeper. <laughs> You guys just stop being crazy, huh? You're okay, honey. Yeah, she's good. Okay. 
<laughs> he used to be the sweetest young boy. Mm -hmm. He's not so sweet anymore. 